Hi, this is Kenyon Williams again, back with video two of three about how to use a pearl mallet station for beginners. People are trying to use it quick, fast, and specifically are trying to use it with an iPad running uh, mallet station software to get it set up, and then sample tank on the iPad itself to get things moving. Now, for people like me who are just absolute beginners, the easiest thing to do I quickly discovered is to simply plug this directly in. By the way, um, when I have this plugged in, when I want my sounds, I uh, realize that if I have the volume up on my iPad too high or too high, I quickly started getting a lot of feedback from my speaker. So I getting clipped sounds, let nasty, nasty pops and buzzes. So what I had to do is get the volume on my iPad. Number one, before you panic and hurt your speaker, put the volume on your iPad uh, for sound output, medium to medium low. Then set the volume over here on your keyboard amp uh, at bottom and then start of cart working your way up until you got to a decent volume. Now, for this video, I'm not gonna be ex experimenting with sounds as much as showing you how to use sample tank quickly in terms of what works for the mallet station. All right, so it's plugged into my mallet station here. It's plugging itself, it's getting itself booted up. Now, sample tank comes, the free version, comes with very limited sounds and limited capability. I quickly realized to do anything, I was gonna to need to purchase a fuller version. So I went ahead and purchased the, the next version up, which is around $20. That came with a few basic sounds. I quickly discovered that those basic sounds, however, don't have much keyboard percussion. And I wanted something that had vibraphone, celeste, crotales, chimes, things like that. So of course that meant I need to purchase extra libraries to do that. Now this is where the beauty of Sample Tank really comes in. It is very much an app store product designed to be find what you like, press the button, purchase it, don't worry about installing it, it does it automatically for you, gets it all where it needs to be. Which since I'm not a computer type of guy, a gearhead, whew, that was a big load off my mind. So let me show you how to do that. So I open it up. First thing you want to do is you go over here to the libraries. Here are some different libraries that pop up that you can purchase if you see closely here the different prices. Uh, what I love about this is you can purchase libraries full of just the sounds you want. So for example, if I want just ethnic voices, if I want just bass sounds, I don't have to buy a $300 collection of sounds. I can buy $10, $15 at a time, $5 at a time of what I like. Now, what I wanted to get started was the sample, I bought the basic sample tank, then I scroll down here, look for some libraries. Ah, there's a chromatic pack. You can see 22 additional mallet instruments. I went ahead and installed that. I think, I can't remember the price of that right now, and it'll probably change by the time you see this video. The other thing I went ahead and purchased was the Miroslav Philharmonic. Uh, this was a uh, more complete set of sounds. Again, added some mallet sounds that were not included in my others. And I also purchased the Miroslav Philharmonic 2, not the full version, because I don't want the woodwinds and brass for what I'm using. I simply purchased the chromatic. And notice it doesn't call it mallet keyboards, mallets or keyboards, it calls it chromatic. A little weird, but nevertheless. So I went and purchased that, includes marimba, glockenspiel, some great chime sounds, but chime sounds that have some glitches too, and I'll talk about that in a second. So there I got my, I downloaded my libraries. By the time all was said and done, I purchased about $60 worth of uh, percussion-related samples that come right inside this program. They quickly and easily installed, worked beautifully. The downside I want to point out here is that for some incredibly stupid reason, Sample Tank doesn't list which sounds are associated with which libraries. So for example, I had a hard time trying to find a decent uh, chime sound, or xylophone sound, excuse me. So I purchased one library thinking, oh, surely the orchestral uh, Philharmonic sounds will have a xylophone. No, nope, it doesn't. Miroslav Philharmonic, surely that'll have a xylophone. No, nope, purchase that, it doesn't. I looked online, IK, multimedia, nobody seems to list what is in, included in all of these um, sample libraries. So that's a source of frustration. I didn't purchase the orchestral library percussion. There might be a better sound in there, but to be honest, I just got kind of sick of spending money and I found something that worked instead, so I decided to let that sit. Although I can tell the orchestral percussion, from what they've listed here, they don't see a whole lot of keyboard instruments that tends to be things like uh, timpani, gongs, and uh, crash cymbals. Now, once I have that in place, the next thing I did was go over here, click on this up here in the upper corner, and that's gonna take me to my live performance setup. That other window you saw there was basically designed for looping and programming. I'm not interested in that at all. I'm interested in live performance. So here's my live things. Now, first off, here's the name of the instrument each one. Here you see the MIDI channel that's being used. Click on that. I select which MIDI channel it's going to go to, okay? Then I can select which instrument I want to go there. So for example, if I go to my categories, I'm gonna back up here. In this case, I'm gonna go down to chromatic and chromatic, there's vibes, so I'm gonna select vibes, vibes pops up, and I want vibes coming in from my MIDI controller on channel one, so I'm gonna line up channel one, vibes. Boom, I got that set up. Now, I go over here to this one, and uh, I wanna click on this. Notice click on the upper button, don't click on down here. This 
that actually, this turns the sound off or on. So for live performance, if I want to turn off a specific sound, if I have overlapping sounds, I'll show you how to do that in the next video, then in that case, I want to be able to uh, click that off or on a sound. So if I want to add or change, click the upper buttons here. Okay, as you can see, it changes way down there. I'm going to click this one right here. I'm going to change sounds. I'm going to go to my uh, another library. Here I've got my Miroslav Philharmonic. Click on that. I'm going to go down again to, in this case, Chromatic. There's only a Celeste. That's a horrible library. I only have that for Philharmonic. So Philharmonic 2, click on Chromatic. Here you can see I have a much wider variety of, of instruments. I still don't have a xylophone. Strikes me as odd. But I do have some chimes and things like that. So I'll click on chimes. And I want that coming in. Since my first one's channel 1, I want this one coming in on channel 2 is what I'm going to say. So I'll put that on channel 2. Now, if I want to be able to play with my sounds individually, I can click on this button up here, and notice that's going to allow me to change my volume. Now, one of the weird things about Sample Tank is these knobs. First time I got it, I was in there going, man, I can't get my finger. That didn't work. Put your finger above it and simply scroll up or scroll down. I don't know why they didn't make it a slider instead of a knob. A knob is false, uh, a false symbol. It should be slider. But nevertheless, same thing here. I can slide up and down to get it the uh, location I want it to be. I'm going to put it right in the middle for my pan. All right. Finally, there's this little element right here. Um, if I click on this, excuse me, that takes me down here. And if I want, for example, just a portion of my keyboard to play chimes, then I click on that button, and I can grab this and slide it down. It's going to move it. Now, right now, as you can see, there's a little glitchy. Here it goes. So now I'm only going to have chimes playing on C1 and higher. If I want vibraphone to play, then I would click on this one, Oop. click on my upper button, and now you can see it's on MIDI channel one. So I can go over here and scroll over, and I can grab that and drag that down. Oop. Once again, it's a little glitchy. There it goes. I'm going to drag that down so I would have at this point my vibes playing on the bottom. Notice now I technically have a little point where they overlap. And if I really wanted to do something interesting, I could put MIDI 1. Both of them now are on MIDI 1. So when I have it being sent on MIDI 1, I'll show you how to do that in the next video. If I hit my lower notes, I'm going to be getting just vibes. My upper notes are going to get chimes. In the middle, I'm going to get both. That is if I have both sounding. One thing you might want to do is to put two, three, two or three things all in the same MIDI channel, like this, where I can have them overlapping all the time. So I just overlapped my chime and, and my uh, vibes an awful lot. But if I only want vibes to sound, I simply do that. Boom, that sound is officially off. Notice I'm not worrying about muting channel three. Why? Because I'm going to have this program, to, my keyboard, to program only, sorry, to send only on channel one for my vibes. And, uh, but right now, I have vibes and chimes in the same one. If I want just chimes, simply turn off the vibraphone. So now I have MIDI channel one playing chimes only. All right. Now I'm going to go over here to my pre-made library. Notice it's going to say exit. You want to, oh, sorry, I don't want to exit. If I, find, if I make something I like, by the way, this is frustrating for me, I was like, how do I save it? I couldn't find the save button. Finally, it occurred to me to click on this little area. And no, nope, those are the multis that come with the program. User, oh, so now I could enter mine. And when I want to save, I simply, you enter a category right there, click on that, and, uh, in a, and it'll say, okay, click on that. And to download, basically that means download to save it. Then I enter my name, blah, 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 hit okay. I'm not going to worry about saving that right now. But then I would have a, another whole set, preset up little library ready to go. For now, I'm going to go ahead and click on my pre-made library here, which is my Xmas gig I have coming up. And you can see I have a marimba, marimba, glock, vibes, chimes, distant church bells. Now, that said, one of the frustrations, I couldn't find a good xylophone sound. Honestly, the, the only xylophone sound I found in Sample Tank is atrocious. Sounds like they sampled a plastic xylophone with a, with a plastic mallet, um, and it just has no resonance. What I ended up having to do was select the sound here, knock marimba. Knock marimba is in the chromatic pack that comes with the uh, basic Sample Tank. I click on knock marimba, and then I add. Then I had to do that, um, and uh, not, not only do that, but then I had to take it up, transpose it up an octave. So here's, because uh, obviously a xylophone is a transposing instrument. So when I take this, there it is at regular marimba pitch, transpose it up eight pitches. Whoops, excuse me, up eight pitches, and now let's transpose up an octave. Come on, finger work. There we go. Small muscle motions. Oh, it's hard to do. Not something I'd want to do in a fly. Real time, I tell you. There we go. Um, now, that, now I have it transposed up, and it sounds a whole lot, lot more like a nice rosewood xylophone than the xylophone sample they provided. Not terribly happy with what else they got, but that's the way it basically worked. Also, um, you'll notice, too, if you look closely at the screen, I have my marimba on channel one, MIDI channel 1. 
my knock marimba, aka xylophone, transposed up an octave, channel two, glockenspiel, channel three, vibes, channel four, I'm gonna turn on the chimes there, chimes on channel five, and here are my distant church bells also on channel four. And I'm gonna show you why here in just a moment with my very next video.